Well, we're continuing our discussion on right triangle trigonometry and, and specifically uh, a set of three um, applications, three problems that are applications where uh, the problem requires that we deal with a right triangle. In this first problem, you can see in the heading, uh, we're going to need to find the side of a right triangle to solve this problem. And this is a, more, a little more complicated than what we saw in the introduction to right triangle trigonometry. So, of course, together I'll read, uh, we'll read um, the problem. At a point 200 feet from the base of a building, the angle of elevation, we know what that means, to the bottom of its smokestack is 35 degrees, whereas the angle of elevation to the top of the smokestack is 53 degrees. Find the height S of the smoke smokestack alone. Well, one of the things sometimes we find as as challenging is actually drawing a diagram to illustrate the situation. And I don't mean uh, uh, being an artist. We have to gather that information and put it into a form that we can interpret. And that geometry or that uh, diagram helps us do that. And the other part of the problem is labeling all of the pieces that we need. And so sometimes we over label uh, the unknowns or the parts of the diagram that we might think we need. Sometimes we go back and actually uh, do the labeling later on. So I've, I've drawn a diagram here. So we've got a building and it's got a smokestack on top of it. And from a point 200 feet from the building, and we can think of this as where the observer is. Um, if we measure the angle of elevation from this point, I'm calling uh, this position the A position, I guess, but we really are referring to a couple of angles maybe later on here in a moment. But anyway, uh, as it says, is the angle of elevation to the bottom of the smokestack is 35 degrees. And so that means if we think of this as the angle of elevation from here to here, then it's that little angle inside that's the 35 degrees. On the other hand, the angle of elevation to the top of the smokestack is 53 degrees. So this, that's this larger angle, okay? Now, it told us specifically that we needed to find the height S. It told us what we were going to call the height of that smokestack. And so I've illustrated S right here. Now, and of course, we know that this distance in this position is 200. And, and notice here, we, we've got several things going on. We, if you will, we've actually got three different triangles. We've got the triangle right here that is a right triangle. We have a triangle right here that is not a right triangle because there are no 90 degree angles in it. And then we have a large right triangle where this is the hypotenuse. So I'm outlining it here. So we actually have two right triangles, a small one, a large one, and then a third triangle that's not a right triangle. And that one we'll probably ignore for the time being at least because we're talking about right triangles. That's the only information we have at this point. Okay, well, since this S, and I'm, I'm making a note of it here, um, since this S is not the side of a right triangle, then we're going to have to do more. Now, I could label the side of this right triangle, okay, and uh, I decided that I would, and I labeled the side of this right triangle as A. Now, we have another triangle that uh, is a large right triangle and I really don't want to introduce and this is this is um, uh, a little bit of ingenuity and something for you to remember in the future and, and I would say that as I'm going through these of course I already know what to do and so I make it look simple I hope and I have to admit to you that you will probably struggle when you're trying to do these on getting them set up in a way that makes it go smoothly for you. Uh, and after some practice, then you can do it. But in the beginning, it is a struggle. Now, <clears throat> I don't really know, you know, here, here's the issue. This distance right here is not part of a triangle that I can deal with. And this distance right here doesn't involve the S at all. 
So somehow I'm going to I'm going to need to use a right triangle that involves S because that's what I'm looking for. And so out of, out of the thought of ingenuity, why don't I call the length of this this side of the large right triangle simply what it is S plus A. Well, we usually think that we're just going to call something by a single letter or A plus S as I said here. So now we have a right triangle who has a side that is A plus S and S is what we're looking for. So it's useful to incorporate this S into this side of this big right triangle. This little right triangle doesn't have anything to do with S, does it? Okay. So in the small, here's, here's what we could do. If, let's stop and think about this. If we could find this length A, and if we could find this total length A plus S, then to figure out S, all we need to do is take this total length here, A plus S, and subtract away A, and we would be left with S. So that's my, my strategy. And so I'm first looking at how I can calculate A. And A is the side of a right triangle, and it's opposite an angle that is 35 degrees. And I also know a side that is adjacent to that angle that is 200 degree, uh, 200 feet, okay? And so I have an angle that I know, I need to know the opposite side, and I know the adjacent side. So what function deals with an angle, an opposite side, and an adjacent side? And that function is the tangent function, isn't it? So, uh, actually, I'm, a, I'm ahead of myself. I apologize for that. Ignore, ignore what I've got down here, okay? And um, so I'm, I'm concentrating on calculating A, and then I'll concentrate on calculating A plus S. Well, as I was saying, the relationship here is that the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So only unknown would be A. And so I, I translate that into the tangent of 35 degrees is A divided by 200, and I've written that here. Now, I need to know A, and so all I need to do here is multiply both sides of this equation by 200, and so I'll have A is equal to 200 times the tangent of 35 degrees. And we can calculate with, with our calculator now, but I'm, I'm postponing that calculation, but certainly I have a way to calculate A. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the large right triangle, and what I want to know is this distance, okay? I want to know A plus S, and, and of course that won't tell me S, but once I know A plus S and subtract A from it, then I'll have the S value. And so once again, what I know is the angle I have with this big right triangle is 53 degrees. I know an adjacent side, I want to find the opposite side. So once again, tangent of 53 degrees is opposite divided by adjacent. And so for the large right triangle, I'm using that fact. The tangent of 53 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is A plus S, divided by the adjacent side, which is 200. And so when I multiply both sides by 200 here, I end up with A plus S is equal to 200 times the tangent of 53 degrees. So I've gathered all my information together neatly. So what, what I'm going to do next is calculate um, uh, S, okay? And so I, I take what I have right here, I'm, I'm kind of doing this in a, a roundabout way, but I'm taking what I have right here and subtracting A from both sides so that I have what S is equal to. So S is equal to 200 times tangent of 53 degrees minus A. And of course A, we've calculated or have a way of calculating above, is 200 times tangent of 35 degrees. So when I put 200 times tangent of 35 degrees in here, then I have a long calculation. I could have taken this amount and subtracted this amount, and that would be S, and that's exactly what I see. So now it's simply a calculator uh, 
issue. And uh, I guess since I've got my calculator handy, let's go ahead and do this calculation and see that the value we get is as seen there. So I need to, to clear all of that mess. And we're going to take 200 times the tangent. And I should check in advance. I remember that I still have this set to degrees. But I need to make sure that my mode is in degrees because that's what I'm dealing with here, not radians. Uh, so tangent of 53. Close the tangent function. So we close the parentheses. And then subtract. Uh, 200 times the tangent of 35 degrees. Tangent 35 degrees and close the parentheses for tangent of 35 degrees. And click enter and you see we get 125.367 and so on. And of course here I, I, I decided to round to the nearest foot rather than the nearest tenth of a foot. Uh, in, in terms of feet that's probably pretty good what we're doing here. So that's where this 125 came from. Okay. Well, that, that was pretty involved, wasn't it? And it's not unusual that we kind of have to go around about way to get to the information we need. And as I said already, I, I hope I made this look simple, but when you're setting it up on your own, it doesn't go this quickly. I hope you understand that, that you have to maybe struggle a little bit to decide how to label things so that you can get something that's useful to you. And so keep this idea that we've got here in mind. You might be able to use this idea in a different type of problem. Okay, well, let's look at another problem then. Now, in this problem, we don't know, in know this in advance, except that I know what the problem is. In the last one, we were needing to find, uh, oh, well, this is mislabeled, actually. So in the last problem, we were finding the height of a uh, smokestack, and we were actually finding a side. Now, the the the, the the, the height of that smokestack wasn't actually the side of a right triangle, but we needed to find the side of a right triangle so we could calculate the height of that smokestack. Here, the problem is going to require us to find an angle of a right triangle rather than a side. Now, let's read the problem. Swimming pool is 20 feet, uh, excuse me, 20 meters long and 12 meters wide. You know, meters about three feet, so that's about 60 by 36. The bottom is slanted so that the water depth is 1.3 meters at the shallow end, which is, uh, you know, what is that, four, about four feet roughly, um, at the shallow end and four meters at the deep end. And so that's a little more than 12 feet deep, isn't it? Find the angle of depression of the bottom of the pool. So we're finding an angle this time. And, it, and again, it, the, the challenge, the beginning challenge is to draw a diagram and label it properly so that it's useful to us. And that, that is a challenge. Well, I've drawn my pool. Now, of course, the, uh, the width of this pool isn't so important. I'm looking at a cross section of the length. So it's 20 meters from the shallow end, if you will, to the deep end. And at the shallow end, it's 1.3 meters deep. And then, of course, it goes down, 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 down until we get to the deep end, and it's actually 4 meters deep. Now, you, you notice what I've done here is I've drawn a horizontal from the shallow end to the deep end, and so it's the angle across this horizontal down to the bottom of the pool that's the angle of depression. That's what we're looking for. And so I label that angle A. Now, that creates a right triangle. And on this side of the right triangle, uh, what, we, what we know, of course, this leg of the right triangle is 20 meters. This leg of the right triangle is the 4 meters of the total depth less the 1.3 meters of the shallow end. That's this amount. 
So the length of this side of that rectangle, excuse me, that uh, triangle, is 4 minus 1.3 or 2.7 meters. So this part's 2.7 meters, this is 20 meters, and we want to know this angle of depression. We don't really care about the length of the hypotenuse. We want to know this angle A that's right here, the angle of depression. So as we're thinking about this, we need to relate a trig function uh, of an angle. And what do we have related to that angle? We have an adjacent side and an opposite side. Well, what angle relates those two? Well, it's the tangent, isn't it? The tangent of A would be opposite divided by adjacent. And so our job here, we're going to have to use the tangent function to do our work, okay? So the tangent of angle A is the length of the side opposite of A divided by the length of the side adjacent to A. And so that's a 2.7 opposite side divided by adjacent side, which is 20. And I don't really need to round this off at this point. I don't really need to make this calculation at this point, but I've done that. So I've got approximately 0.135 is the tangent of A. Now, that doesn't tell us what A is. That only tells us the value of the tangent. But this is where inverse trig functions come into play again. So you, to, to find the angle of depression, um, we need to use our calculator and calculate the inverse tangent of this point, uh, this 0 0.135, because the inverse tangent of this means that if, um, if A is the inverse, well, A would be the angle, wouldn't it? Whose tangent is 0 0.0135. So the bottom line is here, um, we take the inverse tangent of this 0 0.135. And when we do that, we get a result that is approximately 7.69 degrees. Okay. Um, so inverse, and, and what does that tell us? See, let's, let's keep in mind what that tells us. When we say A is equal to the inverse tangent of 0 0.135, that means if we take the tangent of A, we get 0 0.135, and that's the scenario we've got. So all we have to do is use our calculator to calculate this inverse tangent value. And so that's telling us the tangent of 7.69 degrees is 0 0.135, so that's what the value of A has to be. And we could do this with our calculator. I guess uh, since I've used my calculator in the past, let's do it again here. Okay, just to remind you, we're dealing with inverse tangent. So the inverse, here's the tangent key. The inverse tangent is the, the uh, yellow above the tangent key. So I use second tangent. That gives me inverse tangent. And then, of course, point one, three, five, and we've got to make sure that we're in uh, degree mode, but we are. And so now when I press enter, you see I get 7.688, and I rounded it to the uh, 100th of degrees, okay, tenths, 100ths. I rounded it to 100ths, and you can see why I got 7.69 degrees approximately. So that's this angle of depression. Okay, here's our third problem. And you can see in the title it says, find direction in terms of bearing. Uh, so there's some more information we're going to have to use here. Um, a ship, leave, uh, as we read the problem, a ship leaves port at noon and heads due west at 20 knots. Okay, well, what's a knot? It's a nautical um, mile per hour. That's, what, well, that's why it's called knots. At 2 p.m., the ship changes course to, well, here's what we, how we read that, north 54 degrees west. In 54 degrees west is read as north 54 degrees west. Find the ship's bearing and distance from the port of departure at 3 p.m. Ooh. Hmm. Well, the first thing we need to understand is bearing. 
okay? And uh, this, this tells us this part right here is a bearing, a direction from a position. So let's go through before we actually do this problem and uh, get a little information. As you can see here, it says in surveying and navigation, uh, directions are generally given in terms of bearings. And that's what this is right here, north 54 degrees west. A bearing measures the acute angle, so it's got to be uh, less than 90 degrees. A bearing measures the acute angle a path or line of sight makes with a fixed north-south line. Now I know that doesn't mean much until we see an example. So here's, and let's look at an example. So uh, we might have an observer, or this might be the starting position, and this might be uh, the path that we're taking. And so uh, what, what we would see here is called a bearing of south 35 degrees east. And here's the way that is interpreted. We have a north axis, we have a south axis. And we're, we're in the southern part of this. So we could go along the south axis, that's the S, and we measure 35 degrees towards the east. That's what it's telling us to do here. So south, 35 degrees east, this is, this is our direction from the compass point. Let's look at the next example. This is north 80 degrees west. So here's our compass, center of our compass. The north says we measure off of the north axis. The 80 degrees tells us what angle we're going to measure, and this tells us which direction from the north axis we're going to measure, west. So we go along the north axis, and we measure toward the west 80 degrees, and so that is the bearing that we see from our compass point or center to the direction that we're going or have gone. And lastly, we see here one that reads north 45 degrees east. So we go along the north axis, and this time we measure our angle toward the east off of the north axis. And so that means we're measuring in this direction. And so you see here uh, 45 degrees to the east, and that gives us this bearing. Okay, this direction. So uh, that's what we mean when we talk about bearing. Now we're also going to have to come up with, in addition, a distance. And there's several pieces of information here that we're going to use. So let's go to the next page. And, and I've restated the problem so we have it to look at. And here the diagram becomes somewhat complicated. Okay, and I've drawn it. Now, again, this is a place that we spend some time on, and you can clearly see that I spent some time, okay? So I'm thinking of this as our port of departure right here, this position, okay? And so I'm thinking of a compass that is, as at the center of a compass point, okay? Now, here's what it tells us. The ship leaves port at noon and heads due west at 20 knots, okay? Heads due net west at 20 knots. So it's going due west from this position at 20 knots, okay? And it left at noon. At 2 p.m., the ship changes course. Okay, now wait. It traveled from noon to 2 p.m. at 20 knots. So it traveled for two hours, and it traveled at 20 nautical miles per hour. So that means this distance is 40 nautical miles. See, we've got to put all that together. A knot is a speed, and it's a speed of how fast we're traveling nautical miles. So if we're traveling 20 knots, a speed of 20 knots, that means we're traveling 20 knots per nautical miles per hour, and we've traveled for two hours, so we've traveled for 40 nautical miles before we change direction, okay? Now the ship changes course. So I'm thinking if at this position, we're going to have a new direction or a new bearing. And that direction is north 45 degrees west. So I'm thinking here's my north-south axis. Here's my east-west axis. I go along my north axis and I, uh, as I'm measuring, and I measure 54 degrees to the west. And so it's this angle right in here, as you can see, that looks like 540 but it's 54 degrees. This angle right in here is 54 degrees. Now, 
find the ship's bearing and distance from the port of departure at 3 p.m. So at 2 p.m. we changed directions, the ship did, and at 3 p.m. we want to know information. So from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., which is one hour, is traveling along here. And in one hour, it's traveling at 20 knots or 20 nautical miles per hour. And so it's traveled for 20 nautical miles from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Now, that's important because we know this side of a triangle and we know this side of a triangle. But the problem is, if we look at this big triangle, that's not a right triangle, is it? And so we're, the only thing we know about is right triangles. So let me uh, point out to you that there are two right triangles. There is a little tiny right triangle that's right here. And all we know about that little tri tri uh, tiny right triangle uh, given is that this hypotenuse is 20. And then we have a large right triangle right here. And we're interested in this large right triangle because we need to know the bearing, okay? We need to know the bearing. So that's along here, uh, or the direction, if you will, find the bearing and distance. And we also need to know the distance, which means we need to know the length of this side, okay? Now, the length of this side is part of a large right triangle, and this is the hypotenuse of the large right triangle. Now, of course, the, each of the triangles share this side, um, and furthermore, uh, well, let, let's just stop it at that. So we, there's a lot of information. Now, let's keep in mind, again, what we're trying to accomplish. We need to know this distance, and it is going to be a psi, the hypotenuse of a large right triangle. Unfortunately, we don't know anything complete about that large right triangle, okay? We know this part of the total side over here, this total leg uh, is 40. We know this, uh, excuse me, this length is 40, but we don't know the total length. So if we could find this amount, then we would know the total length of this side. And if we could find this amount, we would know the length of this side. So we'd actually have two sides of that right triangle. And surely from that information, we could come up with this distance because we could use the Pythagorean theorem if nothing else, couldn't we? Now, to find these two pieces, we're going to end up using this right triangle. Okay, we're going to use this right triangle to come up with these two pieces, and in the long term, they will be important information for finding the length or the distance from the port of departure that the ship is at uh, when the ship is uh, at, at 3 p.m. where the ship is. Now, the other thing we need to know is the bearing. And in this case, the bearing would be measured from the north axis to this line right here. But that's not part of a triangle. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to find this angle. Okay, we're going to find the little angle right here. And we're going to subtract that from 90 because all the way down here is 90. So we'll take 90 and subtract this little angle and that will give us the angle here. So that's the strategy. Well, let's get started. I'm exhausted talking about it. Okay. So consider the triangle BCD, BCD. So that's this little right triangle that I was referring to. Now, let's gather as much information as we can. And I'll, let, me, let me call the angle right in here, this triangle B. See, this is angle B, angle C, which is the right angle, and angle D. Now, Angle B is 90 degrees minus 54. Remember, if I consider the angle from the north to the uh, west axis, that's a 90 degree angle. And so all I need to do is to subtract that 54 degrees away to get the angle of this right triangle right here, angle B. So I take the 90 degrees, subtract 54 degrees, and get 36 degrees. So that's what we have here. Now, Notice over here, 
what I've got, okay? The sine of this 36 degrees, sine of 30, and, and I had to make this decision, but sine of 36 degrees, see, I don't, I don't need tangent here because tangent is opposite over adjacent. What I need is opposite over a side that I know, which is the hypotenuse. Okay, so opposite over hypotenuse is uh, sine, isn't it? So the sine of 36 degrees is B divided by 20. And from that, inf opposite over hypotenuse. And from that information, I can solve for B. I'm just going to take B. I'm going to take both sides and multiply by 20. So B is 20 times sine of 36 degrees. And that's what I've written here. Now, to find D, I, I need to use the angle that I know, 36 degrees. I'm looking for D, and I know the hypotenuse. And so cosine of 36 degrees is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So cosine of 36 degrees is D divided by the hypotenuse 20. And from this, I can solve for D, just multiply both sides by 20. So D is 20 times cosine of 36. I haven't done the calculations yet, but now I know uh, a way to calculate B and a way to calculate D. Now, what good does that do me? Well, let's look down here. I've kind of kept it all together, okay? Now, here, here's what I'm after next, okay? I'm not after the length of the side yet, the distance. I'm after this angle so I can calculate a bearing. So I'm calling this angle A. That's why that's labeled angle A. Now, what I, what I know without actually having numbers, I know uh, this side, or at least I have a way to calculate it, and I know this side, which is this D plus 40. And so in this D, I don't have the number in front of me, but I have a way to calculate it. So I'm, complain I'm uh, claiming I know this side, and I know this side, which is D plus 40 altogether. Now, if I'm looking at angle A, I know the opposite side and the adjacent side, and that reeks of dealing with tangent. So that's true. In the triangle ACD, right, triangle ACD, I have the tangent of angle A is the opposite side, B, divided by the adjacent side, and the adjacent side is this D plus this 40. And so that's what I've written here. Now, I, I just put that information in. I mean, B, I haven't calculated yet, but B is 20 times sine of 36 degrees. And D is 20 times cosine of 36 degrees, and then, of course, plus the 40. That's the uh, adjacent side. And so I could, uh, here's what I've done, is I've calculated that with my calculator, and uh, I have a lot of decimal places because I'm not really finished. I need to know the angle A. And so the way I calculate the angle A is I take, whoops, I didn't complete this problem, I can see. Um, I take the inverse tangent of this number. The angle A is the inverse tangent of this result or the inverse tangent of this thing that's very complicated here. Okay, now, like I said, I'm just now noticing that I haven't completed the problem, so I'm going to have to come back and complete the problem for us here. But what we know so far is that this A right here, this angle, is approximately 11.82 degrees. Now, that's not going to give me the bearing, is it? That's, that's not the bearing. That is only this angle. The bearing is going to be... Uh, let me pause and we'll write it in. Okay, like I said, I was uh, premature. I found angle A, but our problem was not to find angle A. Our problem, we're asked to do what? Find the ship's bearing and distance from the port of departure at 3 p.m. 
So we need to find the bearing, which means we need to find this angle off of the north axis measured to this dashed line, this large hypotenuse. So, and, and the way we would do that, remember, we found that angle A, that's this angle we have right in here, we found that angle A was 11.82 degrees. And so this angle is 90 degrees subtract 11.82. And so our bearing is off of the north axis measured to the west, whatever 90 minus 11.82 is. And 90 minus 11.82 is 78.18. So I suppose we could uh, take our hint and round this actually uh, to uh, just degrees, uh, unit degrees, and say that this is north 78 degrees west. The bearing is north 78 degrees west as we see here. Now the other thing we were supposed to do is find the ship's distance from the port of departure. Now, this is where the ship is at 3 p.m. See, at, at noon it's here, excuse me, it leaves at noon, at 2 p.m. it's here, and then we change direction for an hour and we go to 3 p.m. So the distance from the port of departure is this hypotenuse. Well, if I consider this hypotenuse, in this case, I consider this hypotenuse C, okay, and I consider this leg, of course, is A. I'm calling it A. Don't ignore the labels here, and we'll call this leg B, okay? So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, or C is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Well, now A, this side, we calculated as, that's our B, we calculated as 20 times the sine of 36 degrees. So our A, that's this side, is 20 times sine of 36 degrees. And of course, A is being squared. Plus, uh, and what we have here, of course, is the side that I'm calling B, and that's the side all the way across here, okay, all the way across. And so that's the D amount plus the 40. And uh, the D amount is 20 times the cosine of 36 degrees plus the 40, okay, is what we get for the length of this adjacent side, this leg, and this leg, okay, uh, is the A. And so we square the B, which is 20, not the B we have labeled, but this leg. Uh, is uh, 20 times cosine of 36 degrees plus 40. We square that. And when we do the calculation, and you can test this on your calculator, uh, we should get 56.24. And probably I would round that to 56, but just so that you can check yourself, nautical miles. That's the distance we are from the port of departure. And that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, here's 40 miles, uh, nautical miles. And here's 20 more, but we're not 20 straight to the west. And so we would have to be less than 60, but, but close to it. And that's what we're seeing here. Okay. So bearing is north 78 degrees west. And the distance from the port of departure is approximately 56 nautical miles. We've completed the problem. Well, I hope uh, this information about angle of elevation and about uh, bearings uh, give you some hint at, at what you can do. And of course, you can look at this video again. You can slow it down and make sure that you stop it and pause it and make sure you understand the different pieces that we discovered and talked about here. Well, good luck to you uh, on your homework.